I feel weird. Hey, Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you need from Power Director University. Today we're going to be doing the talking head effect using Power Director 15 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. All right, Power Director peeps. We're going to start off this tutorial in Photoshop, and then we're going to transition over into Power Director 15 Ultimate. Before I get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Power Director University to get great tips and tricks like this every Saturday. In order to do this effect, you need to use a PNG image and you need to mask out part of that image so that you can control the mouth. I'm going to go ahead and use this PNG image that I have right now. You can tell that this is a PNG transparent image because of the checkerboard around the head. So all of this is going to be transparent when I bring it into Power Director. So the first thing I want to do is press Control T on my keyboard so that I can go ahead and rotate this a little bit because it's not straight and I want it to be straight. So I'm just going to place my cursor anywhere outside of the nodes where I see a curved line with two arrows and I'm going to hold down my left mouse and turn it. And I think that's pretty good there. Next thing I'm going to do is click on this little checkbox to say, yes, I want to confirm that change. Now I need to create the mask. So what I want to do first is kind of zoom in on the picture. So I'm going to go to view, zoom in, and I'm trying to zoom in so I can get a good look at my little ugly mouth here with all of my nastiness going on. So I'm going to zoom in one more time. Eh, it's a little bit too much. I'm going to zoom out a little. That'll work. Now I'm going to go over here to my tools and I'm going to right click on the lasso tool section and I'm going to go to polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to just place my cursor where I want and I'm going to click on my left mouse and start creating a mask to mask out my mouth. And I'm going to come down here below the edge of the mouth. I'm just going to make sure it's a straight line because I know that it's all going to be transparent anyway when I'm done. So I'm going to try to get this as close to a straight line as possible so that I can go straight up from here back to that last point on the mouth. And so now we can see the little marching ants going around here. So I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to pick layer via cut. And so now you can see here on the side that I have two layers, one where the mouth is gone and one of just the mouth. So if I were to make just that visible, you'll see that I've masked out that piece and then you can do the same thing here and that piece is masked out. So now what I need to do is save each one of these layers as a separate PNG image so that I can actually control the movement of each one independently when I bring it into Power Director. So I'm going to uncheck the eyeball for the mouth or deselect it. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And for the format, I'm going to choose PNG. I'll give it a name. And I'll click on Save. For compression, I'm going to leave it as small as slow and interlace none. I'm going to click on OK. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the top piece. I'm going to select the mouth now and deselect the top and just save the mouth. So you do the same thing, file, save as, give it a name and a, pick a location for it to go to. That's how you create the head and the mouth so that they can move independently 
in your video. So I'm going to close out Photoshop. As a matter of fact, let's just bring up Power Director here. And you can see I already have the images in the timeline. I also have my video that I'm going to place the images over. So the first thing that I want to do is add the entire head so I can go ahead and put it into a position where I want it. So here we see the head and I'm just going to place my cursor over the node so I can change the size. So I think I have it in a position that I like now. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go up to media content and for this drop down, I'm going to click on the arrow here and I'm going to click color boards. What I want to do is add a color board over the mouth section so that when the mouth opens and closes, you don't see my face or the video behind it. You'll just see black. So I'm going to drag this color board for black underneath or underneath the picture and so now you'll see it on the screen what I want to do at this point is just place my cursor over one of the nodes hold down my left mouse and bring this down to a size that I like that is over the mouth I think that's a pretty good size for me, so I'm going to leave it there. Now that I have those things there, I want to go ahead and bring the top of the head and then the mouth part of the head onto the timeline. So I'm going to go back here and hit this drop down arrow and go back to media content. I'm going to move my timeline down here so I can see these other tracks. And first, I'm going to go ahead and bring down the top head. And I'm going to move this over so that the photo covers the entire time. I'm going to right click on this split gas face clip, which is the original one that I put into position. And I'm going to do copy keyframe attributes. Because what it's going to do is it's going to move this other picture right exactly where the top split gas face picture is at. So I'm going to do paste keyframe attributes and it should go right over it. Okay. So now I'm going to bring in the mouth. I'm going to slide that down into place. I can go ahead and right click the clip of the top of the head. Do copy keyframe attributes. Click on the mouth. Right click that and do paste keyframe attributes and they should all be in place now perfectly. Now it looks like everything is where I want it so I can get rid of this one that I used to create a reference. Just delete this clip and now I just have the top, the mouth, and then the black part now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the clip that has the audio in it so that I can determine where I want the mouth to move. So I'm going to right click on this and go to use automatic music beat detection. You might get a message here. Just click on OK. If you split the clip or made any adjustments, you'll probably get that message. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my finger over the A key on my keyboard because I'm going to use that to mark wherever the individual says a word. So I'm going to hit play and then I'm going to hit the A key when he says something. I feel weird. Okay, so I'm done with that. I'm going to go ahead and click on apply. And now you'll see the three markers that I added 
Now, they might not be where they need to be. Might have hit it late, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to stretch out my timeline here so I can see them. And if you can see the waveform of your audio, that would be even better because you could just line them right up with the waveform. For this audio, it's really low. Uh, I haven't done my audio edits yet, so you can't really see the waveform. So these markers work best for me. So now I'm going to play this again by hitting my space bar and see how close this first marker is to when he actually says the word. I feel pretty far off. I feel. I feel it's more like right here. I feel and that's at 414. So I'm going to right click this and do edit clip marker. Change it to 414 and click on OK and it'll move right there. So now I want to know where he says the next word. So now that I have my markers where I want, I want to use the markers to split the clip of the individual moving his mouth. So I'm going to split it at this marker. I'm going to split it at this marker. I'll split it at this marker. And then I'll split it one more place after this marker. That seems pretty good. So now that I have all that set up, I'm going to go down here to the first clip that I split. I'm going to go to designer and PIP designer. I'm going to click on the position keyframe because I want to change the position of the mouth to make it move up and down. So this is the beginning of that split clip and the mouth is closed. So at the end of the split clip, I also want the mouth to be closed. So I'm going to add another keyframe by dragging my playhead to the end of the clip and then clicking on the position keyframe again. And then I'm going to try to place my playhead somewhere near the middle. I think that's a good place there. I'm going to add another keyframe here. And then I'm going to try to change this to a position where the mouth is open as far as I want it to be. And I think that's pretty good there. You can see when he opens the mouth, the black color board that I put in there is there now. So I have it at a pretty good clip here. So what will happen is if I Scrub the timeline is the mouth will open and then the mouth will close. So I'm going to click on OK. And now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to right click this clip, copy keyframe attributes, go to the next clip that is supposed to be him opening his mouth for the next word. And I'm going to right click on that one and do paste keyframe attributes. I'll do the same thing for the last one. I'm going to right click on it and do paste keyframe attributes. And so now if you play this back, the individual's mouth should move when he talks. I feel weird. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's how you do a talking head in Power Director 15 Ultimate. All right, Power Director peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. Now, I want to send a shout out to one of our subscribers, Scenic Fox. Scenic Fox makes videos about the scenery of the places that he visits. So, if you want to see some great Scenic Fox videos of scenery of beautiful places, head over to his channel, watch a couple of his videos, and if you're feeling what he's doing, make sure that you subscribe. If you want to receive a shout out like Scenic Fox did, make sure that you go to the video description and fill out the shout out request form. If you have a tutorial that you'd like us to make, go to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things that I need you to do for me. 
the thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click on that. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you do that, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any other learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.